Hey, what is going on, everybody? Evil facial hair Boylan here for another video on Marvel Strike Force. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing something that is brought up every now and then as it relates to new characters, and that's uh, their standalone viability. I think for the most part, we try to extract as much value out of a character as we possibly can. Uh, so when we think about, you know, whether or not a character is worth, say, gear tier 15 or 16, even, uh, we think about how many game modes that they're viable in are they worth building more broadly you know this kind of thing and and why is this even important you know there are those people who will say well of course you know that these characters are meant to be used in their team but i think that personally the ones that are viable, more viable outside of their own team, you know, contain that much more value in terms of their long-term viability in the game. Uh, characters who kind of suck outside of their team are less likely to be that long-term viable. Uh, so I want to go through a bit of history uh, and then really take a look at how many of them have been more widely viable. So without further ado, let's get this show started. Uh, and so you guys may be familiar with this spreadsheet. This is my main Marvel Strike Force character spreadsheet that I update uh, quite frequently, you know, whenever there's new data for, you know, when the character comes out, uh, available in orbs, dates, that kind of stuff, you know. So I, I have this here, and I kind of want to go probably to about towards the end of 2020, I think, or maybe like mid-2020, and I kind of want to start here. In terms of the characters that were more widely viable when they were released compared to, and kind of look at this from a patch-by-patch -patch perspective, and, and see, you know, like, is there a trend? You know, how many characters per patch were useful and were not, you know? So I want to guess, we'll start here with the power armor patch. This is when they added uh, iron, or sorry, not, it wasn't the power armor patch, sorry. Well, sort of, uh, when they added an iron heart. So iron heart, not really viable outside. Of, I, I would say she's not. Uh, she was there to be a fill-in, uh, to be a better vision for Power Armor, uh, Power Armor 2.0. Um, not really viable much outside of the Power Armor 2.0 team. Uh, Domino, Negasonic, and X-23. This was X-Force, uh, also a War Offense team. I think, more broadly, it really was X-23. I, I think that if you wanted to extract more value out of X-23, you probably could. I didn't personally, because I didn't, I, I wasn't a, on my radar, I guess, really, at the time. And so I didn't really build or invest much into uh, these sets of characters. But I think I know that some people did take X-23, for example, to Gear Tier 14. Possibly might have even used her in uh, Dark Dimension 3 Global, that kind of thing. Uh, but I didn't. Uh, therefore, that's you know one out of three characters so in that total patch really it was just like one out of four characters that were kind of widely viable uh, squirrel girl beast and emma frost now i think that's a no-brainer here uh, emma frost really was that character that was really great uh everywhere kind of when when she was released a uh, squirrel girl on the other hand I, I love squirrel girl and she's amazing now um I tried to extract some value out of her. It's kind of hit or miss because back then it was the hero. Um, the the yeah, actually it was the Young Avengers back then, but it was kind of crap, right? Uh, with with Miles and so on, and it was not. It, it really missed the mark there, I would say. Um, so I, I don't really give a lot of value for that. Then I think the Squirrel Girl is really good now, but I'm probably biased on this one, and you guys probably know that based on my opinions on Squirrel Girl. Swarm, Baron Zemo, Electro, and Doc Ock. This was the patch for the summer and September. Uh, Baron Zemo, absolutely. Great character here, extracted a shit ton of value out of him, you know, and, and you still are kind of using him, and and actually I plan on doing a standalone video on Baron Zemo, I think, if I, you know, it, it, because he is such a, um, a, dark a dark horse, I guess is what I wanted to say, you know, a really good standalone character that has and brings a lot of value to the game, and because of that kind of speed meta, or just the, 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 the speed issue, like he goes well before a lot of other characters, and for that reason I think that he is a very good one. Doc Ock, of course, because he's a legendary, I think a lot of legendaries do have that standalone value. Swarm and Electro, probably not. You know, this is in a similar position to, say, Domino and... Um, who's the other one? Sorry. <laughs> and uh, Negasonic. I don't think they really had a ton of value outside their team. Scream, She-Hulk, and Anti-Venom. She-Hulk, definitely not. Scream and Anti-Venom. Anti-Venom, maybe. Scream, 
I don't think she's the kind of character that you just wanted to like plop and copy and paste and use standalone. I think you really needed that symbiote synergy. Anti-Venom, I think more broadly you could have because he's a support character and I think that there is other value there for him. Some of his healing and some of his kit actually did apply uh, to non-symbiote characters as well. So there was more value there. So it seems like on a whole that there's maybe like one, maybe two max characters that are kind of more widely viable in the game in terms of their long-term perspective. Stature, Ghost, Yellow Jacket and well doom okay doom is a separate case because he was a dark dimension 4 character um ghost i think for sure um oh, nobody really used the full pim tech team when it came to dark dimension when it was released this was dark dimension 4 some people may have in the beginning but i think it was a bit of a bait and switch team i don't think with the reworks of course i don't think we're really that good and so for that reason, I think Ghost definitely had more value than some of the other characters. Uh, Shatterstar, Longshot, um, this, these were really good characters together. Standalone, probably not, you know, because you kind of needed that synergy that they had with them. That being said, like, as a duo, it was actually really good. So we can kind of compare this to be the early days of uh, Cersei and Icarus, right? This was, like, before Cersei and Icarus was a thing. And so as a duo, the value was really high. Um, as a standalone, not so much. You didn't need their full team, though, even with, like, Polaris and Multiple Man later on we'll talk about. Uh, so Shatterstar and Longshot, it's a bit of a weird one here. But, yeah, th there was value, but, you know, not standalone value, I guess you could say. Yelena, definitely not. Red Guardian, did. However, I don't think it lasted very long, because it basically lasted for as long as until Capsan came out with the Secret Avengers, and that was about it. A lot of people used Red Guardian in the early days of, like, Doom 1 for skill, because he was the best tank. His stats were very good. It was just unfortunate that Power Creep got hit by with Cap Sam, and his stats were significantly better than Red Guardian for the time. Kitty Pride and Iceman, typically not characters you want to use standalone either. Iceman was available in the pocket dimension, and that's fine, but it wasn't a very difficult and challenging thing. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't. Bishop, Beast, all of the Astonishing X-Men, frankly, I don't really think I would use them standalone because they lose a significant amount of synergy by not having Jubilee, actually, most of the time. So, a uh, Jubilee is standalone viable, but I don't think the rest of her, is, her team really is that much. Some people might argue that Beast has some standalone viability, but it's like a fraction uh, of what it really is in the team and 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 that goes without saying of course but i just don't think it's enough that i would say you know take beast to dark dimension personally because i don't think a standalone viability outside the team is there white tiger definitely not in my in my in my opinion anyways moon knight I also don't think so, however, some people might argue with me on this one. Uh, for those of you who may have built White Tiger and Moon Knight pretty big, um, possibly. I guess the thing is that White Tiger doesn't really get um, ability block, those kind of things I think outside of war, and there's a lot of war context. So in terms of viability outside their intended game mode, outside of their, um, you know, outside their team, definitely it's not there. Uh, as far as Shadowland goes, I think actually Night Nurse, when they had the rework for Night Nurse, that was probably the best standalone character uh, of this sort of patch. So you can kind of see that there's not very many characters actually that kind of exceed their value, basically exceed expectations in terms of their value. Like, I think the best ones here in this section was probably Baron Zemo, actually, back before when we were talking about him. Ghost, doom i guess but that goes without saying and, and, and you know and, and maybe red guardian here you know there there was very few that were like kind of standalone great on their own silver surfer no brainer here polaris and multiple man standalone not so good some people did use multiple man in dark dimension city but mm, i never did and so if you did great then you extracted some value there but it was hitter the only reason for that i think is because multiple man was city and a lot of there just wasn't a lot of good options for those running dark dimension 4 city without waiting for more characters i guess uh silver surfer of course so that's uh, one exception here Kestrel, absolutely. Uh, one of the best characters in the game that came out around uh, just at the end of April here uh, last year. Colleen Wing, I, I wouldn't say so. I don't think anyone really used her in Doom Raid skill. Uh, Misty Knight, now this is a weird one because I don't think she had that value then, uh, back when she came out. I think that now some people are trying to extract more value out of Misty Knight now for Dark Dimension 5 uh, City, uh, you know, as a tech character because there's not a lot of solid tech characters to take in 
in general, but into city. Um, and then I think that people are trying to use her, or, or maybe some people do use her in Doom Raid 2 tech to place that ability block on Dr. Doom. So I don't think there was that value at the time. I think her value may have been raised a little bit, but that's more like circumstantial rather than her actually being good. I think it's just because the options are very limited when it comes to tech. Uh, Phylavel, Moon Dragon, and Adam Warlock. Moon Dragon, some. Uh, obviously, in Doom Raid skill, she was a good support character. You could use her alongside Maria Hill. Frankly, she came out before Maria Hill. So when people were running Doom Raid, I, I think people opted to use Moon Dragon before Maria Hill was a thing. After that, some people did still continue to use them because they took them up to gear tier 14 and 15. Adam Warlock, standalone and Dark Dimension Legendary, uh, that was fine. I wouldn't necessarily do so now. That's a different conversation. Uh, and for Doom Raid Mystic, people were using him actually for a good while until the Eternals came out and basically blew everything out of the water. Uh, Phyla Vel, not so much. Uh, she didn't really get a ton of value. You didn't really use her in Doom Raid Bio. You never really did. Uh, you didn't... You, you did use her with her team in, in Dark Dimension. A lot of the common wisdom was to do Gamora, um, Phyla, you know, do all that for the cosmic section of Dark Dimension, and that was fine, actually. Uh, alongside Kestrel, that was common wisdom. Uh, Gamora actually had some decent standalone value outside of her team, and also outside of Arena, where it was intended for Infinity Watch. Like, you could use her, so there is that, um, even though we're not looking at the, the rework characters necessarily. So, it seems like there's about one or two characters per patch, maybe. Um, Sharon Carter, I'm not sure if I would really use her standalone, if you can help it, uh, but Maria Hill and Capsam, definitely, uh, really, really strong characters. I think I have a personal bias with Maria Hill, because I think she is one of the top five best characters in the game. She is the best support character in the game. And as far as healing goes, and standalone viability is really, really good. I took her to Dark Dimension 5, gear tier 16. I think she's. I took her before Cap Sam. Um, but Cap Sam is like basically one of the best tanks in the game. He's got turn bar manipulation. And so standalone value is really high here uh, with some of these characters. And I think we're kind of seeing this as we get further down or like to present day that some of the, there was, there's definitely more standalone viable characters than there ever was before. Um, Deathpool. Definitely standalone value there. Um, maybe not as many places as... She's kind of expensive to gear, so I don't know if she's necessarily a Dark Dimension pick. Probably not a Dark Dimension 5 pick, but, you know, she does have more wider viability. You can use her outside of her team as well. Uh, Shang-Chi, super amazing standalone character. Kicks people in the face, does so much damage. You can use him in his team, you can use him outside his team, and he's perfectly fine. Um, his kit's really good, and so, yeah, that was, you know, that's that's basically two there. Cloak, also, I think, not as strong as shang Chi standalone, but I think you definitely still can, and people do. Dark Dimension is a good example of that. I don't think you need Dagger. It's not as crutching as the dad bros duo was in terms of the uh synergy for that so i think that cloak is viable standalone i think that dagger is also viable standalone but because she's more expensive to gear i think she's better with cloak than cloak is with dagger if that makes some sense at all uh silver samurai lady deathstrike and omega red obviously omega red legendary character don't have to explain that really um lady deathstrike a lot of people are extracting value out of lady deathstrike for doom raid tech uh, a lot of people are using her in Dark Dimension. You know, she's got a lot of good value. And so I would put Lady Deathstrike there. Silver Samurai is a bit more questionable. I, I think that some people may be pivoting to Silver Samurai for Dark Dimension 5. But, you know, as far as a standalone character, uh, not comparably to the others. I, I, I don't know. Is he better than Sabretooth? I'm not sure on a standalone value. So, you know, if I were to have to say that one of them is not standalone viable, I would definitely give it to Silver Samurai because I think the other two are a lot better. Cersei and Icarus. So I think that Cersei is better than Icarus standalone. Because as far as what the kits do for each other, Cersei is, you know, has that clan, you know, people were using her in Pocket Dimension um, solo. And I think that's fine. Icarus, sort of, you know, he has really high damage, but you really want to have both of them together. And this is just taking Dad Bros to, like, the ninth degree. Like, it's just, it's crazy. So, Cersei, yes. Icarus, maybe. But both of them, obviously, are OP. Uh, Magic, no. Standalone viable, no. Um, Ghost Spider, kinda. Spider Punk. No, he's just pure damage, really. Scarlet Spider? Kinda. 
Ghost Spider is more standalone viable in my opinion than, than Scarlet Spider because actually the damage passive that Ghost Spider has uh, works on herself outside of raids whereas the other characters require raids to get that buff. So Scarlet Spider has a lot less going for him outside of his team and outside of his intended game mode whereas I think the Ghost Spider can be a little bit more widely viable. T'Challa, uh, this is a tricky one. I think this is really just circumstantial because, again, just like Misty Knight, um, there's not a lot of solid tech characters. So outside of his team, kind of, in Doom Raid tech, but a lot of people, this is a tough call. I didn't really gear him, so um, I might have varied opinions on, on T'Challa over others. Echo, no. Kate Bishop, sort of, but maybe that's because I built Young Avengers and I really want this to be a thing. Um, I, I think that Kate Bishop is definitely more viable than Echo, but once again, just like Star-Lord and like Misty Knight, I feel this is circumstantial to tech, being in a very awkward position as far as what characters are available and what people are willing to gear and not gear. Um, and so this gets us to some of the other ones that we're basically at now. Dr. Voodoo and Morbius. I think that more people are trying to do this with Morbius with Dark Dimension outside of his team um, because he's a relatively cheap character to gear. He is mystic, though. Um, would you want to use him standalone more generally if you could help it? Probably not. Dr. Voodoo, maybe, actually. I, I He has some long cooldowns, but his alt is actually really good, and his special does apply barrier to other characters that are not Dark Hunters. So I think that there is... I, I, yeah, I, I think there's actually some more wider standalone viability. If you have the gear, in an ideal scenario where you have the gear, I think that actually almost all of them, except for maybe Elsa, are standalone viable in the Dark Hunters team. I, I think they actually have some good kits. I think you can use them standalone in a variety of different places. And this brings us to the final patch. Strange, Evil Strange, Wong, Agatha, Morgan, Madeline. Madeline, I don't think so. Um, I'm actually not even planning on, on pulling red stars for Madeline. Um, I'm I'm sure, yeah, Morgan for sure. You know, Dark Dimension, Arena, War. You probably could also just pull her outside of her team, frankly. Her, her kit looks really, really, is really, really good. Um, Agatha, maybe. Strange, probably. Wong, I don't think so. I think his cooldowns are far too high to be used outside of his team and more viable. So one thing that I have noticed, though is that in a full new team, like Darkhold, for example, I think there's like one character, maybe two characters that just really aren't that viable outside of their full team. It's been a while since we've had like a full team of five new characters since like a staunching X-Men. I know these aren't five because we have Scarlet Witch that's four. Um, but if we take a look at like other teams, you know, Black Order was four new Black Order members with Thanos. Uh, I think that like Call Obsidian to some degree and Corvus Glaive to some degree were not really viable outside their team. So in a team of four or five, you're probably going to get one or two characters that really just are not, you know, stellar outside their team. You know, so Wong is that for me personally. I don't think that based on his cooldowns and his kit is something that's really widely viable. Echo for Young Avengers, um, Spider Punk for Web Warriors. There's at least one of them. Silver Samurai for Weapon X. You know, there's at least Dagger maybe as well. Sharon Carter, possibly. You know, Moon Dragon, possibly. Um, or even Philovel, frankly. Um, there's 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 one or two of these characters in every team that are just widely not viable. And why is this important? And is that's because you want to focus on who you want to put most of your gear in. If you're concerned about their long-term viability and whether or not you're going to extract a lot of value out of that character, it's different for an arena meta team, I think, where you're going to want like all of them up to gear tier 15 as high as you can. But for other teams that maybe aren't arena meta, these are kind of some of the considerations that you should take uh, when you're considering how much gear to invest in a certain character. That there's always going to be that that one, that Wong or that, that Echo, who's maybe not going to be as more widely viable. And so you should consider, you know, how much investment you want to put into each of these characters when you're building that team. So that's the end of this video. Uh, let me know if it was helpful. If it was, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and of course until next time stay safe and healthy and i'll see you all later well on signing out